Bloodborne is rated Mature 17 Plus by the ESRB for blood and gore and violence. This Let's Play is directed at an adult audience and will feature adult language and discussion of the subject material. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello there gamers, I'm the Orange Ranger and welcome to another episode of Bloodborne on Orange Ranger Plays. Last time, honestly it's a little hard to remember, I know we took care of the Blood Starved Beast, finishing out Old Yarnum, and we kind of, we started to go into the woods, the Forbidden Woods, and then we thought better about that and we doubled back and it's a little up in the air. Um, I have something else to talk about first. The main reason that I can't really remember is that it's been a while since I've played as Orpington. And I actually have a little footage here that I'm probably cutting in to show you. Oh, and um, as that even that footage is playing or I'm just talking, I'm actually going to go on a little uh, echo getting run. Um, that I've started doing on this other run that I'm about to talk about. So in terms of making Let's Play videos, you're running through this game that hopefully you really love because you're wanting to show it off to people and why it's amazing and all that stuff. But that can be kind of a double-edged sword because a game like Bloodborne that really has me grabbed. Bloodborne may not be my favorite video game because that's Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, but it's absolutely top five. It is absolutely positively uh, top five, maybe my second favorite video game ever, to be completely honest. Um, and so when you enjoy a game that much, um, and you're playing it for a Let's Play, you know, Let's Plays are interactive. I will take a slight moment within this to say that, um, I'll just say that these videos haven't been as interactive as I would like. I haven't really gotten any comments on them. Um... Which is a little disappointing. People are watching. You know, they have the videos, like I said last time I checked, are, are tracking a little bit better than Link to the Past was, which I was expecting. Because Link to the Past is a beloved game from the ages, but Bloodborne's a little more recent. I don't know why this dude keeps ending up in the ground. Um, I was going to talk about that at some point. Um, but there just seems to be a glitchy area there. One of those enemies will constantly end up falling through the ground and attacking you from some lower platform or something. With Dizzy Tail Head poking up out of the ground. Anyway, um, I was expecting Bloodborne. I killed you here, right? I see the gun, but not the hunter. Okay, yeah, I shot them off of the thing. Um... So yeah, I haven't really gotten any comments, you know, I, if you're watching this video, leave a comment, just about anything, you know, I'd appreciate that. Just to let me know that you're watching, how you're liking the series, etc, etc. But anyway, um, Let's Plays are ideally, I will say, uh, an interactive sort of thing, so I can't just, like, play the entire game and then, um, you know, edit all of those episodes. I can do it that way, of course, but that doesn't give you, the audience, an opportunity to interact back with me um, and have me do things in the middle. Like, you know, hey, in this area, make sure you watch out for, hey, hey, that's a, that's a murder of crows. Or I guess now I should say a murdered of crows. Got him! Anyway, I apologize for that. Came up with that joke while doing other stuff and just, I had to use it. So anyway, um, if I just play the entire game and record it and then edit all those episodes, 
you know, you can never, like, say, hey, while you're in this area, you should try this. You know, and, like, I will say, I've been so excited about the series that, um, that my uploaded episodes are pretty far ahead of, uh, the day it is. I will say this episode, which I believe is episode 17, is being recorded on August the 3rd and will be posted on August the 28th. So I'm nearly a month ahead on these videos, which is, um, interesting. But I don't want to get too far ahead. Um, you might remember the point where I said that I had the itch to play the game, but I didn't want to, you know, get too far ahead in the Let's Play or anything. And then I remembered that I was at a point where I needed to grind Blood Echoes uh, to try and level up and recover Blood Vials and stuff like that, so I did that off screen. I don't want to do that too often because I don't want to kind of break up your experience watching this game where... Oh, he must have been the one that ran over there. Okay. He's normally standing over here. Um, I don't want to break up your experience too much where you go from one episode to the next and it's like, oh, well, I'm like five levels stronger and, you know, have three new attacks and, and just uh, everything, you know. New attacks isn't even really a thing in this game, but um, anyway. So, I recently got that itch again and I was like, I, you know, what do I do? Because I don't want uh, the character in the Let's Play to get away from the viewers. Ow! Believe it or not, I was supposed to do that. Not land that way. There's a way to get all the way down here. But I was coming down here. I don't want the Let's Play to get too far away from the viewers, but I also want to play this game because it's a lot of fun, and I'm playing it right now. So, um... When you're playing games on the PlayStation, the save system is often associated with the user profile accounts. And it's like, could you please try locking onto the thing that is closest to you? That was a fighting fly. Um, it is often locked to the um, profile system where you can have different users, the user system, so to speak, on the PlayStation. And then just basically each of those is, um, is its own account for a game. You know, so like, instead of having these distinct save files, where this is my save file and then this is the other save file for my other campaign, in this case, um, I have a separate account on my PS4 that funny enough was set up because I was having trouble getting into my main one and then I figured it out so it, it's just been sitting there as like a relic but now I found a use for it and that is to have a second run of Bloodborne going on my PS4 at the same time. By the way I should take a second to stop here and say that I haven't done this particular part um, that I'm doing right now yet I discovered this on the other run just because that ledge up there was broken and then it looked like there was an area I could jump to. So I tried to and I did and then it was like, well, where do I go now? And it lets you into this room here, this building, where there is a chest that contains a tempering gem bloodstone. You go upstairs here. I think all the enemies have come downstairs at this point. I believe so. And, oh, actually, there's something else up here. Oh, 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 no, over there. What does this note say? The red moon hangs low, and beasts rule the streets. Are we left with no other choice than to burn it all to cinders? By the way, notice at the bottom of there, X, close, circle, return. X, close, Circle return. Two different button choices that do precisely the same thing. So, remember that I left something down there. <laughs> Just happened to see the little... I think they make items like white and fiery because that is the best possible contrast against Bloodborne's very dark brown and black color scheme. 
Rifle Spear! I actually bypassed this a couple times in the other run, which I will get back to talking about in a moment. Um, but you might remember when we came in here, the hunter that was up on the clock tower with the friggin' Gatling gun um, was like, listen, beasts have taken over this town. I'm watching it. Those doors are closed. They're not going to get up to the main part of town. Hunters are not welcome here. I've got it under control. And then we went in and killed them and took care of everything anyway. That note there, the beasts have taken over the town, is the only option to burn everything. There's somebody here in burnt-looking clothes sitting in a chair. And the item we can get from them is charred hunter garb. Charred hunter gloves and charred hunter trousers. So yeah, this hunter, this hunter made the decision that all they could do, okay, I didn't kneel or anything. She just sank like <laughs> a foot down. And you can kind of see from like that angle, yeah, her feet and stuff are below the ground. Anyway, it does set up a pretty good angle. Um, oh, I stood back up. Anyway, this hunter here made the decision that the town was taken over. The only option was to burn everything down. And um, you know the song, the uh, recent cover uh, by I think Fallout Boy came out, We Didn't Start the Fire, or the original? Uh, this guy did start the fire. Eh. He started the fire, and then uh, he burned. He stayed here and just burned alive. I am going to honor his sacrifice by putting on his clothing. You notice there was no hat, so we get to keep our hunter hat. But I will say that um, in terms of... Why am I wearing black church garb? See, oh, because it was a dress, right. It was a dress, right. And church garb is important. We need to keep that for something else, someone we will run into at some point. But you see, the most defense I could have was the hunter garb, and this is the same. Uh, 110 physical defense um, and 100 blunt defense, but a slight reduction in thrust defense, a slight reduction in blood defense, the same arcane defense, and a slight reduction in bolt defense. But a nice little spike up in fire defense. That's how it's going to be for pretty much each of these pieces. Um, they, oh, they are a little bit better straight up than the hunter gloves. Uh, and, yeah. So, basically, it is a slightly better choice, uh, even with a slight deduction and it just looks good too the outfit actually has more personality than the straight up hunter's garb so okay now and then that is going to deposit us out here there are enemies out here there are supposed to be enemies out here they were late come on where's the other one did i kill him already weird anyway and yeah you might recognize this area it lets you out this window so that really is just a little secret and just to show you again like how i found it i came over here and i'm like anytime there's a broken railing in bloodborne that's you know take a look and see why every once in a while the game tries to trick you into jumping into an area you can't go but uh you see i was like there's a ledge here and then i can jump to that and then i can jump to that and I actually did the first time. I jumped down there, and then I jumped uh, over to that. But you can't get anywhere from there. You just have to keep dropping down. That's just a little extra. Um, oh, somebody. Oh, hi. There you are. You were on a smoke break, weren't you? You were late. You're supposed to be way the heck over there. Actually, I don't think so. I think he's supposed to be up towards the building, and then he just saw me going around. So, anyway, 14 minutes in and I still haven't totally explained about my other uh, run-through. So, with that other account on my PS4, I started a brand new run of Bloodborne. Oh, on, on, this, on this one, actually, I remember the hunter fell, but I didn't get the item that they have for me. Um, so, 
and I said that like if you leave and come back, it's usually up on top of the building, and it is in this case, deposited right by the gun. The powder keg hunter badge. I like. I'm a little unclear on what badges do. I know one of them um, grants you the ability to like buy certain items, and that can be. Um, that could be what all of them do. Again, I'm not sure. Also, um, the other playthrough clued me into the fact that beating the Blood Starved Beast actually unlocks the ability for you to buy fire paper. I found this out because when I beat the Blood Starved Beast on this run, a big reason for that and getting it done in one shot was that I had fire paper. Uh, and I went to go try to buy more, and you can't, and I was like, why can't I buy it? And you can't buy it until you beat the Blood Star Beast, which you can use it on. So, I used Molotovs, and it helped me out. Anyway, climb up this clock tower here, and there's a little ledge you can jump down to. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oopsie doodle. Oh, and you're just dead. <laughs> What's interesting to me, going back and forth between these now... Oh, you're level 46. Uh, my other character is, like, level... Probably getting near 30 at this point, to be honest. Um, but... Um, and, and has made it to this area. You know, so... I was like... I felt like I was hitting harder, and that's why. Because I am. Um... I'm doing a... Okay. I have to explain about the background of that run. This is tricky to do, talking about this while uh, <laughs> while playing this game at the same time. But I am going to keep trying. I, I'm just going to collect some items up here. Uh, so I decided to start a second run of Bloodborne using the other account on my PS4. And... Um, I did some different things, like my hunter in this is female, so my hunter in that is male. Um, Orpington is kind of an orangish red. The other character is light, a lightish green with orange hair. And this character's name is Orpington McBaz. The name of that character is Toopington two Pington Othery. It's the number two Pington Othery. Um, and I have a little bit of backstory for him. Uh, because they are actually brother and sister. Orpington is the older sister and Toopington is the younger brother. He has a different last name because their parents divorced when they were young and made the painful but they felt best decision to basically split the children. You know, so uh, one parent got, oh, I didn't do it right and I fell very far. This is extremely bad. This is extremely bad. I will try to explain why that was a thing. Okay, I'm pretty safe. There's gonna be some enemies up top. They're not too hard. I'm actually just gonna run past them. Um, I'm gonna heal some more. So the parents made the difficult decisions to split the children. Uh, Orpington went with her mother. Listen, if you want some, you're gonna get some, all right? I'm trying to tell familial stories about my two Bloodborne characters, and y'all wanna come out here and try to put an end on my life situation and de-blood me, you know, I'm, I'm gonna treat you rudely. Anyway. <laughs> Orpington went with her mother. Toopington went with his father. Um, and both decided to become hunters. Um, but, but Toopington was always the little brother, always far weaker, and got, like, hand-me-downs. So... Um, what I'm saying is that Toopington, I, the thing is I needed a way to make this extra playthrough of the game, which is technically speaking my fourth run through on Bloodborne, a little more interesting. So, um, a lot of people really admired Orpington, but considered Toopington a real waste of skin. 
Yes, I decided to go with the waste of skin background in character creation. The fuck? <laughs> so, um, you might have seen there, I collected some echoes, which meant something somewhere died. Anyway, <laughs> uh, maybe the game just felt sorry for Toopington, but I'm playing Warpington right now. Maybe the game likes Warpington better, too. I was like, I'm going to show that by giving her some random echoes. Um, he was considered a real waste of skin, and while, you know, his mother was an expert hunter who had the best weapons to choose from, all Toopington's father could give him was his old threaded cane. To directly translate this, I went with the weakest background and weakest starting weapon in the game. I'm playing the game through with the threaded cane. Gosh dang it! Not where I needed to be. I made a jump to this platform, but this platform is not where I need to go. Okay, I'm gonna do a jump to try to get past them. Do do! Do 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 do. Um, no, you need to get up and move. <laughs> it should be clear, but there's an item I'm trying to run to, uh, or run to jump to, and the only way to get to it is that path up there. But this is giving me an opportunity to talk about this, so I will talk. Um, so I have this other uh, run of the game going. Uh, with a significantly weaker character. Uh, Orpington started leveling from level 10, but um, Toopington started leveling from level 4 and has a weaker weapon that has had to sort of catch up. Now, I've done some extra grinding uh, to, to make that character really playable. Uh, I will say that um, going through... And trying to fight the cleric beast and everything. What ended up being the best decision for me was to have a run where I made it to the cleric beast. I ran in to get the one insight from seeing it. I tried to beat it, but I died. But then that one insight unlocked the doll, and then I could start grinding. So that's what I did. I, <laughs> I grinded levels for a while. Would it be? easier for me to do I mean I can't really jump from there is the thing because you you need to be running to jump like, and I don't think you have enough room standing right there to do it so go oh, there it is hunter's rally Yay! But I do have triumph. No, use triumph. Yes! <laughs> so, um, and that run is going fairly well. Like I said, I'm also at about, so you get the bloody messenger, um, I'm literally just cutting back and forth between talking about this other run of the game and, uh, and what's going on in this game. Where are the are they in garb? No. Key items. Okay, there we go. The red messenger ribbon. Um, I yeah, I must I must have shown picking it up. Um, I didn't really talk about it at the time. The red messenger ribbon is in the uh, sideline item quest thing involved with the little girl in the window, uh, Father Gascoigne's daughter, that you told. Um, that she died, the that he died, that both of her parents died. Um, the story, so to speak, again, Bloodborne is kind of light on the ground with story, is that basically after she came to terms with that, she left her house to probably, considering the way she was going, try to find her mother's body, and made it a good distance, but got killed by a giant pig. So, and that was her ribbon, and we'll be able to show that to somebody later. But Bloody Messenger Head Badge head bandage um items that the messengers can wear 
Accessory worn by messengers playing make-believe. Cute little item. And I mean, like, does it help you in any particular way? Not that I'm aware of, but it was just fun to be able to jump over here and say that I got that difficult to get item. Now we'll come down here. I don't think there's anything down here, though. Um, are there items on that side that I haven't gotten? I think I got all of those the first time. I just didn't remember about these at the time. So it has been what I'm the point I'm belaboringly trying to get to in terms of um, the second playthrough. Um, it did, first of all, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It freed me up to play uh, Bloodborne without worrying as much about the Let's Play, so now I can play it whenever I want and don't have to worry about setting up recording equipment and etc., etc. But also it let me go back over some things and re-realize some things and figure some stuff out. Um, I will say, and will hopefully demonstrate here for you momentarily, that one thing I've gotten significantly better at now is this. Okay, are you going to act the same way in this game? I just, I, I did a little test run. I will say, among other things, that this is uh, the first time, the first episode in which I'm recording audio into the computer uh, and not the camera because of the issues before with lost commentary. Um, but, and so I used the other, uh, the other playthrough to do a recording to test audio levels. I was going to try recording both in OBS. I lowered the Elgato's volume to 75%. It was way too loud, and I thought, you know, it's still better for me to actually record separate audio. Uh, and, oh, you, there you go. Okay, so now I'm going to kill him because I was just out of swords, but in that, what I was saying there is that in that test run through, um, that big guy did the exact same thing. He wouldn't attack me. He was just standing there. Finally, in this case, he attacked. So cool. Um, but... Hmm. The... Lost my train of thought. Gonna try to get it back. Uh, I was testing the audio. Oh, and I was testing the audio... And um, even at 75%, the Elgato was too loud. And I just had the thought that it's really better to um, be recording them on separate sources so I can adjust each of their volumes as I want to. Ow. Um, and I decided to... Um, I'm So now I'm recording the microphone with Audacity and recording the gameplay with OBS, which I think is going to work out. The other thing I was saying is that I've learned some stuff and been able to practice some stuff in my other playthrough with Toopington, and one thing that I've gotten pretty good at is this. Gun Stagger and Visceral. A backstab is not the only way that you can get a Visceral in Bloodborne. Just before an enemy attacks you, Shoot them. If you time it right, they will stagger. You can walk right up to their chest. You have about a three or four second window. And uh, blast them. Blast their little Nardolinos. And you'll be good. Okay. I have to say, with the threaded cane, I was half tempted to get it and level it. Yeah! And level it up over here. Um... Not a lot of people choose it or like it because it is a weaker weapon. The enemies from downstairs are actually going to funnel up the stairs here now that I'm here. They're with, oh, or they not. Well, let me, I'm just going to shoot my gun. Will that alert y'all? No. Huh. In my previous experience with Toopington, um, although I didn't land on the floor in those cases, all the enemies would hear that screen and filter up here. Anyway, um, the threaded cane is not a bad weapon. It just starts out weaker and um, is a skill-based weapon. So in that run, I've dumped a lot of points into skill because it, um, it gives that weapon the most damage right away. 
But the Threaded Cane is another one of Bloodborne's trick weapons. Um, it is a cane kind of functioning like a sword in short mode. And in long mode, it unlocks... I'm trying to think if there's an, like, an American character that uses one of these. I'm sure there is. I can't think of one. The only character that came to mind for me, and I don't even remember uh, their names, but it was the girls from Kamen Rider Kiva in the Blue Sky organization. Uh, it becomes like a chain whip. Uh, and once you are doing decent damage with that, it's actually a really good choice for range and not letting things get too close to you. The only flip side of that equation is that um, you really have to make sure to lock on to enemies before you attack because it's real easy for the chain whip to kind of go all over the place and miss. But as you saw earlier, um, well, function, whatever. Although here I'm strong enough that I'm just kind of wrecking shop, but It's really good with a big group of crows to just swing through with a strong swing and hit them all. That's another thing about it, though, which I find a little bit unusual. The in chain mode, it doesn't seem to have a charged attack like this. Yeah. In, you know, even in long mode, the saw spear has a charged attack, but in uh, but that one, like, there's no flash, and it just does a big whip, the same as with the strong attack, but not charged. So, there you go. But it's a good weapon. And from the start, I felt like, you know, starting with a weaker weapon, starting with a uh, lower level build, it's just worth remembering that Bloodborne is an RPG. So, all you have to do is unlock the ability to grind, and then grind, and then just pull yourself up to the standard level of other stuff and you're not really going to have any problems um i have found i've needed to focus a little more on defense hi there skull beast give me bloodstone shards that i can't use for anything but selling now <laughs> that's even more the case uh in tupington's run because um oh i didn't mean to aggro you both at the same time shoot um that's even more of a case with Tupington because of a reason that I'm about to tell you. <laughs> I may have once again lost my train of thought. Y'all, it might really be gone this time. <laughs> I know, I was talking about weapons and the threaded cane uh, and pull it. I said focus on defense. Um... I don't know. It's gone. Um, <laughs> and a funny thing about doing not just Let's Plays, but any sort of video, especially where you just kind of talk in a flow of consciousness, is that you will lose your train of thought. And then the only way to find out what you were talking about is to go back. So when I'm editing this, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Um, so on screen here, I might put the conclusion of that thought. But... Um, okay, you just dropped out of literally nowhere. Replay. Like, I know that lichen is supposed to be, you know, sniffing around and stuff, but it just dropped in like the game loaded it. Like, pfft. Anyway, um, Orpington feels a little bit squishier for some reason. Or, no, kind of the opposite. Uh, just a little bit more fragile. And so I try to focus on defense. I try to focus on skill, like I said, because um, the weapon is skill-based. And unlike this playthrough, I'm not going to change because I consider beating Bloodborne with a threaded cane something of a challenge. So I'm going to do it. Like, when I told my friend Brill, who I've mentioned, watch him, uh, twitch.tv slash I am Brill, uh, when I told him that I was doing a threaded cane waste of skin run, he says, this is going to hurt. And he's not necessarily wrong. Oh, whoop, got it. Oh, I never got this. Huh. Does that mean you're alive in the corner? Nope, I already killed you. But I didn't get the bloodstone charts that were here. Interesting. Anyway, drop, be, drop, be, drop, be. Um... 
Toopington is fragile and like takes hits harder for some reason. Probably just because of the lower level. Again, I didn't actually realize that um, there was such a significant difference in the number of levels between um, Orpington and um, Toopington. I guess I just got here a lot faster. <laughs> I will say with Orpington and Toopington, I almost considered it more of like um, an alternate universe situation. Um, where like they're just two versions of the same person, which is really closer to the actual reality of the situation. But I just kind of liked it having a story, and now it's like, you know, Toopington is following in Orpington's footsteps in uh, making this hunter's dream right once again. So, there you go. You look up in the corner there, you will see 14,909 echoes. Um, one of those things I discovered in the other playthrough is that once you've reached this place, this is a really good place to grind to grind up echoes. Um, most of what I did earlier today, because I will say I am still looking for a job. I'm trying, just not getting anywhere fast. Um, uh, most of what I did today was playing that run and I got in a situation where I had almost run out of not just blood vials, but because of my new focus on getting visceral attacks, bullets, quicksilver bullets. So um, I did, I think, four runs through this area um, collecting echoes. Uh, I started out collecting vials, and uh, I haven't done, I haven't recorded one of these in a while, and my brain is just not used to this style yet. But I did a run to get vials and bullets and then um, a run to get echoes and level up. See you at the dream. As that loading screen was going, I just remembered that um, that one of the last things I had been doing was actually the Chalice Dungeon. I haven't really touched that in a while, and we don't need to at the moment moment. Wake up, doll. I need to talk to you about level up. Yes, I know you fell asleep. You're a doll in a dream. I don't know how you sleep, but regardless. Oh, it's so great to be up in the levels in like the 40s and stuff and you go on this grinding run and you're like, I got 15,000 echoes and the game's like, great, you can level up once. Hmm. Yeah, see the, um, the saw spear isn't nearly as skill based, so putting a point in that doesn't raise the damage all that much. Uh, let's put it in Endurance. I'm really wanting more stamina to be able to swing more times. Farewell, uh, let's, let's see if you have anything Welcome new to say. Hunters have nope. Bought, I... <sighs> I haven't done whatever the next thing is. <laughs> Bath Messenger! Let's take a look here. Even on this run, I've only got an additional 17 blood vials stored. I've got plenty of bullets, though, because I've only just started now to use them more. Um, I saw this in the other run. This is interesting. The rope Molotov cocktail. It uh, Exploding Molotov cocktail that is thrown behind. So it's a Molotov that you can throw backwards. So I guess while you're running from something. I don't know. Um, I've got 10 antidotes, so I'm okay there. Let's dump it into vials. And <laughs> I guess this episode is like, oh, um, as I start to conclude the episode, I remember that I should run this through repair again. 144 echoes. That's okay. I have it. Anything I can do in terms of, well, I think get that other tempering. Again, just go to your first one. See if numbers turn... Whoa. Oh, that's the one I have. I was like, whoa, up to 63. That's the one I'm using. See if any of the numbers turn blue. 
If not, there's no real improvement there. Um, but yeah, call this episode getting back on the horse, I guess, or something. Um, it's about a 40-ish minute episode. It's going to push 45 when I'm done with the outro and everything. Um, because, especially because I just remembered I have something to talk about with that. Um, the 45 minute episode and nothing really happened. I did a grinding run and talked about how I'm playing this game more than once, but that is going to wrap up another episode of Bloodborne on Orange Ranger Plays. Thank you all so much for watching. In the comments below, let me know about your favorite grinding area. Is it Old Yarnum? Is it Central Yarnum right at the beginning because you can kind of blast right through it? Is it another area? I know there are some other good grinding areas late in the game. It's been a while since I've played, you know, deeper into the game to remember them. But um, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite grinding area is. While you're down there, make sure to smack that thumbs up button to let me know that you enjoyed this video. Punch the like button in the face, as Jacksepticeye says. I've been watching a lot of Jacksepticeye. I watched his God of War Let's Play, Dad of Boy. And then I watched Bloodborne. Um, I watched his Let's Play of Bloodborne, which is only like five two-hour episodes, which includes the DLC. So he blasted through. He's played that a lot more than even I have. Uh, now I am watching his Resident Evil 4 remake uh, Let's Play, and he's almost done with it. All that to say, punch the like button in the face. I want to kind of take – I kind of want to emulate his energy. I'm a little low-key sometimes with these. I'm excitable and happy and stuff, but, like, I'd like to be even more enthusiastic and just, you know, get people excited about video games. Punch the like button. <laughs> A comment. Uh, subscribe, which is ironic because the um, video that's pinned at the top of his YouTube page right now is one where he's like, subscribe. That's all this video is going to be about. Do it subscribe <laughs> so um but yeah subscribe to the channel i'm trying to get uh, at the moment up to 100 subscribers i'm still currently at 89 so really the bar hasn't moved in a little while um i want to get to 100 and when i get to 100 i will do some kind of special 100 episode uh 100 subscriber episode i don't know what that will entail but we shall see i just had a really good idea for it I'm not going to share it right now. We'll see about when we get there. But uh, make sure you like, comment, you subscribe. You can check me out on social medias. That's going to be Facebook, Orange Ranger Videos fan page. Twitter, Orange RNGR Plays. I haven't been really good about publicizing when episodes are going up on social media. I am going to try to work on that. Um, and uh, Twitch, Orange underscore Ranger underscore Plays, where I hope to start streaming probably by the fall there's just some stuff i want to get figured out first uh so we shall see i would definitely say by the winter but give it time and we'll find out okay i think or uh orpington is tired here so i bring her in the middle and say until next time heroes may the power of the blood protect you got him that is going to end this episode that none of you are watching, so instead of my usual spiels about my social medias and supporting the channel and all that, I will leave you with the wise words uh, that Aaron Hansen once said. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Eat your teeth. Got him!